<laughs> okay, but let's get down to the nuts and bolts. The stock market is crashing. Mm -hmm. You need to invest in gold and silver the if you want to stay alive. The stock market was rotten to its core. Absolutely. But are you telling people to leave, to go to South America? No, What's your advice? I'm, I'm telling people that you're in for some difficult times. And I say this in my presentations. I jokingly look at them and say, you're all doomed. There's not a one of you that's going to be around 100 years from now. You're doomed. So to hell with it. Enjoy the ride. No, I tell people who are interested in listening for whatever it is I have to say <clears throat> that you're in for some difficult times. It's going to happen. There is no way to avoid it. We cannot go on as we were mm -hmm. because some of our systems were rotten to the core and our banking system, the insurance programs, all of that, stock market, Wall Street, those guys were absolutely rotten. The housing industry. <clears throat> the housing industry. That, that was bound to fail. You talk about a bubble. <clears throat> it was bound to fail. It had to fail. Well, I'm glad it failed. Hope to hell that they learned something from it. No. Okay, but we're ta are we talking about <clears throat> martial law in the United States? I mean, what are we talking here? You're, you're talking about a time when you may have martial law. Uh, it's only one step away. You know that the authority has been given to the president to declare it. Right. Uh, Congress gave that authority to the president years ago. I've even lost track of how long it's been. But anyhow, all the president has to do, whoever he may be, and that doesn't matter much anymore either. Mm -hmm. Because one nitwit is very much like the other. You have a national emergency and it's declared. Right. Boom. Martial law. Mm -hmm. You declare a national emergency, which has not been declared yet. Right. But we're right on the edge of it. Right. And you're going to have martial law. Okay, and but we gone. don't have an election, right? <clears throat> well, it, the, it, you, you're thinking about an October surprise. I have no idea. I'm asking you. Well, I don't know about that. I, I'm not sure it'll happen in October. I, I suspect it may occur within the next year. Hmm. But uh, I don't know. I haven't had any dreams. My dreams have been pretty fascinating recently. But none of them have been terribly troubling. Hmm. And uh, I know this is all happening. It's going to take place. There's, it's inevitable. It's been orchestrated. The Illuminati do exist. They are in power. They've been in power for years. They've been demonstrating that power ever since 1913, when they created the, uh, what the hell is it, this banking system? The Federal Reserve. Federal Reserve, yeah, mm -hmm. which is a private corporation. <clears throat> we lost most of it in 47. I don't know whether you were aware of that, but that was a big year. National security became everything. It became the member of the triad. 47, we declared, uh, we made the National Security Agency. We uh, formed a pact with the Brits, the Australians, the Canadians, and New Zealands. The Yukusa Pact, which most people don't even know exists. <clears throat> the Yakusa crowd, all of us, Britain, US, Canada, New Zealand, Australia, are all like this. Um, whoever's in the White House and who's ever at Buckingham Palace, it don't matter. All right. <clears throat> the power behind the scenes has been running this damn thing since 1947. And Ike saw it, scared the hell out of him. He met the Anunnaki, that scared the hell out of him. So they're pulling our strings now like they always have. Okay. So what's your solution? What would you t tell people? I mean, in facing the future, in trying to <clears throat> reinvent the future, certainly Marsha is working with people to to become enlightened. To She's doing apply. a tremendous amount of work to help to help people trans make this transition. Carrie, we're not just going through a transition; we're going through a transcendent transformation, mm -hmm. literally. A transcendent transformation. We're going to come out of this thing when it's all over with. Totally different species. We're not going to be the same people we, we were in the past. Mm -hmm. And that's good. 
and it's going to hurt and it's going to be painful. And I tell people, and I've said this repeatedly, don't get too uptight about it. You've been through hell before. You're going to through a bit of it again. But once it's over, once you made that transition, we're going to have hopefully a new world, a new future, a new beginning. And I think that's the end of the great year that we're going through. We're, we're going through the, the end of a 26,000 year cycle. And we're, I, I tell you, 2012 don't matter. Mm -hmm. First of all, Christ was born seven years before. And this is a fact. And if you don't believe me, get uh, Sir Lawrence Gardner, who's probably one of the best historians we've got working today. Lawrence Gardner's got the facts. Jesus was born 7 BC on the 1st of March. Now, if you, if you want to count from his birth, like we supposedly have been doing, add seven years to 2008. You end up with 2015. That's pretty close to what 20, oh, so 20, you're saying we're actually in the year 2015 now. No, you, you, we're in the year 2015 right now. Right. So yes. that means that Nibiru, when you say it's coming in 2020, is actually due in about five years. Probably. So we're looking at 2013 by our calendar. Well, no later than 2017. I'll throw 2017 out. Okay. And you can take that to the bank. <laughs> <laughs> 2017. Now okay. that you know that'll give or take a year or two because the, the celestial mechanics they don't have, they haven't really worked at all yet. We've got we've got computers you wouldn't believe, but they're still trying to feed in some of the data. So are you is one of the remote viewers you're in touch with Ingo Swan? I haven't been in touch with Ingo for some time, but I, I Carrie, I've been doing some remote viewing. Right. I've even had a couple of out-of-body experiences. Mm -hmm. I've been doing a lot of meditating. When you go in, when you step into that world, there is no time. Mm -hmm. And you can talk to anybody, everywhere, all at once. Mm -hmm. And now, that sounds silly to anyone who doesn't understand what I'm trying to say. When you step into that realm of timelessness and you remote view and you step out of your body and you go into altered states and you meditate, you're in a timeless, infinite reality that people communicate. You'd be, some, you'd be sh shocked and amazed at the wealth of information that's out there just to tap into. The old, the old ones used to talk about the Akashic Record. Mm -hmm. It's real. It's real. Yes. And it isn't just about the past, because, Carrie, there is no past. Mm -hmm. Nor is there a future. There's only an eternal now. And a physicist sitting here in this room would say balderdash because they wouldn't grasp for a minute what I'm trying to talk about. But old Ingo would. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I've, I've been some of those places myself that you're talking about. I'm, I knew it, you see. <laughs> and so I have to say you're absolutely right. And, and it's uh, incredible pleasure for us to hear this from yourself. And... Um, I, you know, I would like to, at this time, just open the floor and say, is there anything that we haven't covered here that you would like to talk about? And then, of course, we would also like to invite Bill to ask you some questions. We've danced around on a whole bunch of things for the last hour. I enjoy it. I, I, I enjoy chatting with you two guys. You're, you're pleasant people. As I say, I'm an old codger, and you, you, you plug me in and turn me loose. There's no telling where I may end up. I've been around 79 years this trip. I've made a dozen or two previous trips. 
which amazingly I, I remember quite a bit about. When you start going into that timeless realm, <clears throat> you step into that infinite, which we're all part of. Uh, memories of other lives come flooding into you sometimes. Mm -hmm. Oh God, the things I've seen, the things I've done, the places I've been, this life are kind of shocking. The things I've done, the places I've been, and the lives I've lived before are beyond belief. I, I'm not boasting. This is not a boast. Mm -hmm. But I'm an old soul. I've been around on this planet a long time. And I amazingly remember it. Some of the memories I would rather not remember because they're painful. Mm -hmm. Hell, I have memories of Sumer. I knew the Anunnaki back then. Worked with them. I was one of their products. I know them now. And I don't have any fear. And in bringing this to a close, I, I would like to say to whoever is watching, get rid of the fear. You have nothing to fear. You are an immortal, timeless being who has an infinite future in a glorious universe that's so filled with beauty and life that we on this little tiny planet couldn't begin to grasp. But I, I, I say to people, don't be afraid, for God's sake. Gather around you those you love. Spread that love around. And go into tomorrow with courage. Because you've been through a hell of a lot worse before. So be hopeful, love one another, and have courage. And that's really all I have to say. Well, thank you, Bob Dean. It's, it's, it's really an honor and a pleasure. Thank you, Carrie Cassidy. I just enjoyed every minute of it. I'm 79 years old. What do you mean, hold that thought? Step away. You know that the authority has been given to the president to declare it. Right. The Congress gave that authority to the president years ago. I've even lost track of how long it's been. But anyhow, all the president has to do, whoever he may be, and that doesn't matter much anymore either, mm -hmm. because one <clears throat> was bound to fail. It had to fail. Well, I'm glad it failed. Hope to hell that they learn something from it. Now, okay, but we're ta are we talking about <clears throat> martial law in the United States? I mean, what are we talking here? You're you're talking about a time when you may have martial law. Uh, it's only one so on as we were, mm -hmm. because some of our systems were rotten to the core, and our banking system, the insurance programs, all of that, stock market, Wall Street. Those guys were absolutely rotten. The housing industry. <clears throat> the housing industry. That that was bound to fail. You talk about a bubble. <clears throat> okay, but let's get down to the nuts and bolts. The stock market is crashing. Mm -hmm. You need to invest in gold and silver the if you want to stay alive. The stock market was rotten to its core. Absolutely. But are you telling people to leave, to go to South America? No, What's your advice? I'm, I'm telling people that you're in for some difficult times. And I say this in my presentations. I jokingly look at them and say, you're all doomed. There's not a one of you that's gonna be around a hundred years from now. You're doomed, so to hell with it. Enjoy the ride. No, I tell people who are interested in listening for whatever it is I have to say, <clears throat> that you're in for some difficult times. It's going to happen. There is no way to avoid it. We cannot go.